Imagine, if you will, a place normally associated with fun and laughter. A place where children's innocent laughter rings out, echoing against brightly painted walls adorned with cartoon mascots. This place is a sanctuary of joy, a world where worries are forgotten and happiness is the only currency. The air is thick with the sugary scent of cotton candy, undeniable and tempting. The flashing lights from the arcade machines dance against their mirrored surfaces, each reflection adding to the magic of the moment. Excitement and expectation fill the room as children wait their turn to play. The squeals of delight at the screeching sound of a game. The soft padding of small feet running around. The jingling of game tokens being poured into tiny palms. A place where family memories are built and immortalized in faded Polaroids and the echo of laughter. But close your eyes and listen carefully. Across the room, the sound of animatronics singing a cheerful tune. A harmony that's somehow perfect in its electronic imperfection. They are the mascots of this place. A mouse dressed in a red cap and yellow t-shirt. Chuck E. Cheese himself and his band of merry friends. They fill the room with music and joy and yet they stand as testimony to the paradox that is about to unfold. For it is here, within these walls of joy and laughter, that a grotesque story unfolds. A story so unnerving, it sends a chill down your spine, leaving you second-guessing every memory you've ever held of this place. It's a story that taints the cheery atmosphere, sowing dread that germinate in the shadows. Behind the laughter and cheers lingers a lurking sense of dread. The shadows cast by the flashing neon lights seem to grow darker. The animatronic singing grows eerie. The air grows heavier as though bearing the weight of an untold horror. A sinister secret that the walls of this place keep. Now picture that place becoming the setting of one of the most chilling stories in true crime history. This is the tale of the infamous Chuck E. Cheese murder. In the heart of Aurora, Colorado, ensconced within the typical uniformity of the suburban landscape, there stood an establishment that was every child's paradise, a Chuck E. Cheese. This was not just any ordinary place, it was a magical kingdom that transported many young hearts into a world of enchantment and thrill. A world where time seemed to halt, where laughter echoed in the air, and the gleam in every child's eyes mirrored their innocence and joy. This was the place where beautiful memories were created, where many children would excitedly beg their weary yet smiling parents to take them. Parents who willingly obliged, their hearts swelling with affection as they carved out time from their monotonous routines to provide these little moments of sheer happiness to their offspring. These were simple yet precious moments, like a weekend treat or a birthday party, the anticipation of which would keep the children buzzing with excitement. The Chuck E. Cheese was indeed a hub of joy, a place where children's dreams came alive amidst a profusion of games, rides, and delicious food. The tantalizing aroma of the mouth-watering pizzas, the infectious sound of laughter, the chorus of delighted squeals around the gaming machines, and the sheer thrill of winning a coveted prize created a tapestry of happy moments. And then there were the birthday parties, the centerpiece of every child's year. A time when the birthday boy or girl would reign supreme, basking in the warmth of their friends' cheers and the glow of their own special day. These were the days when Chuck E. Cheese was not just an establishment, but a world filled with joy, laughter, and most importantly, love. However, one fateful evening in December 1993, this celebration of life and innocence, this hub of joy and laughter, was abruptly interrupted. The enchanting kingdom of children's dreams morphed into a chilling crime scene. The echoes of laughter were replaced with an eerie silence, and the once vibrant hub was now shrouded in a horrifying cloak of dread and fear. Nathan Dunlap, a discontented former employee, was the architect of this abominable act. He was just an average guy, not particularly noticeable or particularly anything. He had previously held a job working at a local store, where he was known as someone usually reliable. But over time, he became somewhat defiant, developing a pattern of issues that eventually led to his termination. After being dismissed five months prior for a string of infractions, a deep-seated grudge began to form in his heart. 
The firing had hit Nathan than anyone could have imagined. It wasn't just about losing a job, it was the rejection, the humiliation, the loss of dignity that came with it. He felt a certain sense of betrayal, as he had given so much of his time and energy to the company that now had discarded him like a mere object. His life, which had been going along at a mundane pace, turned into a whirlpool of anger and resentment. He spent the months following his dismissal in a dark place, with every passing day fueling his growing grudge. He was nursing this resentment, allowing it to grow, to fester, to boil within him. His mind, once occupied by the regular troubles of life, now harbored a malevolence that was far more sinister. He thought about his former workplace, the faces of his former colleagues, the laughter, the camaraderie they shared, all of which he was no longer a part of. And then that fateful day arrived. A day like any other, with the morning sun rising and setting, turning into a quiet night. But inside Dunlap, a storm was brewing. A storm that had been gathering force for the past five months. As the day slowly turned into night, he could bear it no longer. The grudge he had been nursing had reached its peak. He made the decision. It was time to act. Dunlap, with malevolence in his heart and a plan in his mind, decided to act on his simmering resentment. He entered the establishment just after closing time. The unsuspecting staff, busy with closing duties, failed to perceive the danger lurking in their midst. Dunlap, fully aware of the restaurant's layout and routines, managed to catch them off guard. In a sequence of events that lasted less than 20 minutes, Dunlap coldly executed four of his former colleagues, while critically injuring another. As swiftly as he had arrived, he fled the scene, leaving behind a horrifying tableau of violence. Following a manhunt that lasted several hours, the authorities apprehended Dunlap at his mother's apartment, where he had been hiding. His capture marked the end of one chapter, but it was only the beginning of a long and convoluted legal saga. Dunlap was swiftly convicted and sentenced to death. However, his case ignited a fierce debate on the use of capital punishment. His sentence was postponed several times, and in 2013, the governor of Colorado granted him a temporary reprieve. The Chuck E. Cheese murder case serves as a stark reminder of how places often associated with happiness can become the backdrop for grim and unexpected tragedies. It's a narrative that forces us to confront the complexities of the human mind and the societal implications of crime and punishment. Dunlap's story has been studied, dissected, and discussed in various forms of media, from news outlets to true crime podcasts, each time stirring a mix of emotions from shock to fear, from disbelief to contemplation. It's a tale that, despite its gruesome nature, continues to fascinate and horrify in equal measure. In the end, the Chuck E. Cheese murder isn't just about the act itself, but about the ripple effects it had on a community, a state, and indeed, a nation. It's a chilling testament to the darkness that can lurk beneath the surface, even in the most unexpected places.